The voice of the drum calls. It sings a song of those who came before us and those to come. A song of survival and strength. A song of participation and voice. A song that calls us together. When we come together and participate in the 2010 census, we use this tool as the voice of all our native people. Our voice, it is in our hands, 2010 census. Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update. I'm your host for today's program on a Thursday, February 25th, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here are the latest news stories from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. A man who was fired after he investigated police corruption on the Spokane Indian Reservation has won a $400,000 lawsuit against the Bureau of Indian Affairs for malicious prosecution. Senior Federal Judge Justin Quackenbush ruled in favor of Dwayne Jarvis, who claimed he was persecuted by the agency at the behest of the Spokane tribe. Jarvis was hired by the BIA in 1999 as a criminal investigator and assigned to the Spokane Reservation. In 2001, he learned that two fellow officers were stealing car stereos and other equipment. The BIA then launched a criminal investigation against Jarvis, and he was eventually prosecuted by a Spokane Tribal Court. The State Department of Transportation is getting a $10 million uh, grant to rebuild and surface a deteriorating segment of U.S. Highway 18 on the Pine Ridge Reservation. The grant is part of the federal stimulus package. Representative Stephanie uh, Herseth of uh, Sandalin says improving the stretch from Oglala to Pine Ridge will improve access, safety, and connectivity for tribal and non-tribal members. The Yakima police are investigating the deaths of at least 11 horses near the southern boundary of the tribe's reservation over the last few months. Tribal Council Chairman Harry Smiskin told uh, the uh, local newspaper that few details were available, including whether the deaths were related or not. Motorists reported seeing the carcasses from Highway 97 on the Satis Pass area where thousands of horses roam in herds. Len Schulmeister, the owner of Pine Springs Resort, which is 13 miles north of Goldendale on Highway 97, said he had seen eagles eating at the carcasses over the course of three or four days on several horses. Speculation has focused on whether or not the horses were killed as bait by eagle hunters. Although eagle hunting is illegal, selling the feathers can be lucrative. Federal law prohibits the sale and for most people even the possession of eagle feathers. A tribally owned telephone system is up and running on the Crow Creek Reservation. Native American Telcom Crow Creek provides telephone and advanced broadband service on the reservation now. The Crow Creek Sioux Tribe launched the venture last September. Tribal officials say it will pave the way for business, economic, social, and educational development on their reservation. Bobby Wells has lived all of his life in this remote Alaska village where Eskimo dancing of his ancestors was banned by Quaker missionaries a century ago as a kind of primitive idol tree. Now Wells, 53, and other residents of Norvik have wholeheartedly embraced the ancient practice outlawed in the Inupiat Eskimo settlement, which was established in 1914. This is the way God made us to express our thankfulness to him with dancing, Wells said. The belief of traditional dancing as somehow evil, however, remains deeply ingrained in scores of native villages around the state of Alaska, but some communities have broken away from that ideology in recent decades. One by one, they have resurrected the old dances and songs of the long uh, ago past, along with cultural camps and even language immersion programs. Norvik's decision to lift the ban last fall came after residents learned that they would be the first in the nation to be counted in the 2010 U.S. Census, and that came about earlier this year. Tribal leaders formally approved the proposal to lift the dance ban after it received the blessing of the Norvik Friends Church, despite opposition from some of their elders in the community. Governor Mike Rounds proclaimed a year of unity to continue, an effort started 20 years ago to encourage cooperation and better understanding among the races in South Dakota. Former Governor George Mickelson declared a year of reconciliation in 1990 to promote better relations between American Indians and non-Indians. 
Rollins has said last week that there's been improvements since then, but more can be done. He laid out some steps that state government will take in the next year to encourage better understanding of the native culture and history of their state. A tribal casino could open in Park City by the end of this year. An official with the Wayne Dot Tribe of Oklahoma says Billy Friend, second chief of the tribe, said he learned recently that the tribe's application to have the U.S. Department of Interior put its 10.5 acres in Park City into trust for gambling purposes could be improved within 30 days. The application, which has been pending in the interior since January of 2009, has been signed by the department's solicitor and awaits the signature of Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs Larry Echohawk, and that would complete the process. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for coming here with us and stop by again soon. Miigwech!